Hello and welcome back to this damn full idealistic crusade. This video is another in my series of pulp book reviews, and I'm taking a look at the rather interesting and fascinating Larry Kent series of novels. Uh, now, this character originally started as an Australian radio series entitled I Hate Crime, which is the sort of mantra you see on a lot of the covers of the books. And that's such a wonderful, gritty pulp title that it, it really goes well with the books that followed and I feel the need to just do it in my trailer voice you know and just do I hate crime it just has that ring to it but anyway the radio series uh, was quite successful but was about an Australian private detective but otherwise following in the tradition of most privatized stories and wouldn't necessarily seem like anything uh, all that different from your usual sort of idea of a privatized story aside from the fact that it was an Australian private detective. But they also started a series of novels in the 1950s, and the novels were actually about the Larry Kent character, but he was an American private eye based in New York, still going around the country and, and around the world, but essentially an American private eye. Now, I myself had never heard of this book series, and it remains quite obscure until uh, myself and others have stumbled across some of these reprints with the very striking, very pulpy, uh, what are termed the sort of uh, art, cover art with the good girl artwork on all of them that are, of course, very eye-catching along with the wonderful titles. But but this book series actually lasted uh, with a variety of ghost writers and is somewhere around 400 plus volumes. It was started as a monthly book series and ran for decades. Uh, it's unknown, I think, exactly how many of these there are. And the numbering is apparently a little bit weird because they did reprint some earlier stories as, as later volumes, uh, years after the fact. But uh, there are hundreds of stories of Larry Kent, American private detective. And so getting to look at these and the nice double reprints from Bold Venture Press, who reprinted uh, 12, uh, so 12 double volumes, so 24 stories. Uh, it's it's a really fascinating little pulp gem. They, 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 the stories are very much uh, straightforward. They each run, you know, in these reprints, they're about 100 to 120 pages each. So they are very swift very fast moving and very very two-fisted you very much get the feeling that these are uh, in the mold of mickey spillane but also with some degree of dashiell hammett and and the detective with the moral code a la sam spade but uh our our larry kent is also uh, not immune to the charms of women, but uh, the the uh, the scenes of relations with clients and others are not as, shall we say, alluring as what the covers would indicate. But there's definitely a good degree of uh, at least some sexual flavor to some of the escapades. So you, you expect that in most privatized stories and you get that here, which definitely adds to the pulpy flavor. So there is a degree of the, the covers matching the, the books, but the covers are definitely hyping up those elements to make them more eye-catching. So most readers, and of course, I don't think literary critics have ever looked at these books, but you know, they, they wouldn't seem like they had much out of the ordinary, but these are enjoyable little reads. And actually out of the four that I read in these two reprints, they got better as they went along. So I don't know if it was because it was significantly later in the run or a different writer, but uh, there's there's something to be said about having a nice, taut narrative. It's the same sort of experience you have going back to classic studio films where the runtimes were frequently under 90 minutes, and especially when you get a beautifully made, uh, well-told story that's 80 minutes or less. So uh, to be quite honest, I would actually recommend these to any uh, mystery fan or anyone who loves pulp thrillers, especially uh, the more pulpy pulp detective stories, because I really enjoyed reading the Larry Kent adventures of these these four that I, I sampled. Uh, I, I wish they were better known. I can't believe there's so many of them. And it lasted apparently from the 1950s through at least the 1990s. And the original publisher uh, finally went out of business apparently in 2019. So uh, there are hundreds of volumes. But of course, you would have to track down the original Australian paperbacks. But uh, apparently the company that now has the rights is picked 
Piccadilly Publishing, and they've been doing a number of these titles as ebooks. So they are floating around as ebooks, but uh, the wonderful folks at Bold Venture Press uh, did 12 double volumes, and I just picked the first and 12th volume because they were on extreme discount in their Amazon store, which is really helpful uh, for those of us who want to support independent publishers, but there are certain titles that we don't know if we're really going to like all that much. And every once in a while, they have uh, very substantial discounts on certain titles. So that's why I decided to give these a go. And the reason why I picked volume one and volume 12, even though there's not really a sort of chronology or order to them, it's just more adventures. Uh, but the reason why I chose volume one and 12 is because they were the ones on discount. <laughs> so Bold Venture has done their usual sort of style of having a nice oversized trade paperback with a nice gloss finish, reproducing the original very striking, very pulpy, good girl artwork, uh, which you find on all of these Larry Kent books. And then we have a nice spine, and the rear has the cover of the second book. So I really like what they do with these. It's a very simple but well done, nice cover with the original artwork. And these are also very affordable, but uh, they are frequently on sale in their Amazon store, which I will have links to. But the, the also the great thing about these are some of the titles are just so eye-catchingly wonderful that, uh, as you see here with the first book, Jacob Troy was an old man who had it all. A movie star wife, a vast and thriving business empire, even a castle he bought in Germany and had transplanted brick by brick onto some of Hollywood's primest real estate. But he wanted more. That's why he had hired mobster Danny Hester to put the squeeze on nightclub owner Paul Huntsman. Huntsman hired Larry Kent to find a connection between Troy and Hester that would stand up in a court of law. If he could expose Troy, then he could ruin him. Almost before Larry took the case, however, things moved fast. A case of kidnap, a sadistic beating, a neat little frame-up, and a grisly murder just for starters. What should have been a straightforward assignment soon found Larry Kent fighting for his life in Cry Twice, Kitten. I just, I, I had to read this. It just seemed too pulpy for words. It was also nice that the first story I read had a Hollywood background, which immediately gets my attention, and that runs 107 pages, so literally half of the book. And then you get to the second story. Larry Kent's old buddy Jim Calloway was murdered over a woman. So they said. But who was the woman? No one seemed to know. Not even Jim's killer. Larry suspected the woman was just a diversion. There was another reason for Jim's death, and just maybe, it had something to do with his job with the Narcotics Bureau. Only thing was, Jim was a minor official at the Bureau. No one with any clout, just a desk jockey. One thing for certain, there were people out there, important people, who wanted to bury the case. And if they couldn't kill Larry to stop him investigating, then just maybe, they could send him to Cuba in search of a missing man. After all, he'd be easier to rub out in a foreign country. In... Honey Blonde Blues. And this one was a nice change of pace because it has scenes out of the country and eventually they wind up running around in Cuba. And what's also great about these, they are very pulpy, so there is usually a nice body count that starts from the opening chapter. Uh, so there's various murders, killings, so on and so forth. So by the end of the book, there's a sort of trail of corpses and everybody and the police department and various gangs and criminal factions and what have you. Basically, everybody is after our, our detective character so this pretty much ticks off all the boxes of a lot of the cliches we think of and the private detective story but the stories are so driven and so quickly paced and so I mean they're so well done that they're really enjoyable and the cliches are actually made enjoyable and it does have a nice degree of grittiness and a lived in quality to it so I think people will really enjoy these if you like really nice gritty detective stories that are very much about action and plotting and there there's there's no room for playing around in these because again each one is just over a hundred pages so these are direct and to the point and are very much a sort of point between the classic pulp magazine length uh, for a pulp magazine novel and a full detective novel of the 50s so here is uh, volume 12 the last of the bold venture reprints which has the first book. Fred Wallace came to Davidson, California with a big crooked plan in mind. Then he just disappeared. 
French brother hired Larry Kent to go west and find out what had become of him, a job Larry was glad to accept since Fred had been a childhood friend of his. But the minute he started asking around, he became a target. Someone wanted Fred's secret plan to remain just that. But who was behind the attempts on Larry's life? Carl Esposito, the oily little manager of the Carousel Club. C.R. Partridge, whose bonhomie seemed too good to be true. Or the enigmatic Jonathan Sebastian Everard, the senior elder of a mysterious cult known as Astral Quest, who believed that he was descended from aliens in the heavenly bodies. And I really enjoyed this one. In fact, I enjoyed the, the two stories in this volume even more than the first one. I don't know if it was because that was a sort of warm up, but uh, the two here did seem to have a bit more plot development and some more unique elements that were striking. So the first story is actually dealing with uh, various murders and, and activities in and around a mysterious cult that very much has the air of Scientology, but long before that was a, a, a big major thing that everybody knew about. But it's basically a, a strange sort of religious cult that has uh, mysterious financial backing and uh, may or may not be behind these uh, murders and crimes that have been committed. And our detective goes out to California. California and gets mixed up in all of this. And of course, again, the uh, first book this time, it's a little bit longer as well. It's basically about 120 pages. So uh, that might also have something to do with uh, why I, I liked this uh, particular volume more than the first, because the stories were also a little bit longer. Well, we get to the second book, which has its cover reproduced here on the back, but the title, my gosh, the title is so wonderfully cheesy that as soon as I saw the title, I was like, I don't care if this book sucks. I have to read this because which rhymes with dot, dot, dot. When Larry Kent said goodbye to Eve Delmar, she was alive. The next morning, she turned up dead, shot to death. But who wanted to kill her and why? The chief suspect was her estranged husband, but he was a friend of Larry's. And when he denied murder, Larry believed him. So he set out to find the real killer and save his friend from a hot date with the electric chair. But the case soon turned even more complicated. What part did nightclub owner Earl Salem play in it all? How did a seven-year-old out-of-state murder tie into it? It was only when someone decided that Larry himself should be his next victim that he realized he was up against something bigger than he could have possibly suspected in... Which rhymes with... That still cracks me up. I can't help it. And this is actually the best of the four. So again, I think as they go along, each one gets a little better. Uh, this one, I think, has the most nuance, the most character development. It's got a nice sort of uh, plot hook of Larry being personally involved and in trying to get his friend out of a murder rap for uh, the ex-wife dying, who is also a friend and acquaintance of our detective character. And it's just... Of the four, it's the most lived in. I think it's the best written, and it was a good way to close out reading these two books. So again, these are a load of fun, and Bold Venture also includes some nice ads for some of their other pulps and reprints in the back. So I always enjoy reading one of their reprints, and they're always nicely put together. The only thing with them outside of, of course, their, their print on demand in terms of uh, most uh, independent publishers are doing that route. So when you order them, eventually, you know, it'll take a little while to print and then they'll have the little print on demand indication on the back page. But uh, with Bold Venture, the only thing I've run into is, and again, it's not just them. This happens with a lot of small publishing houses. Occasionally you do run into some typos. Uh, thankfully, this is nothing like what, what happened in uh, some of their Zorro volumes where the typos were really bad in, in volume two of the Zorro stories overall. Um, here, there's just one or two very, very, very minor ones. They, they're kind of just blinking. You miss them. Uh, but I have noticed that in the various Bold Venture books I've, I've, I've read that usually you'll see a, a small typo here and there. But uh, again, that that is unfortunately common to a lot of independent publishers, but you would wish they had you know, a little bit more in the proofreading department. But again, they're not a major publisher. So so I get that. And the ones here are very, very minor. It's usually just like one letter here and there. So nothing major. But I did want to make note of it because that does bug me when I run into a typo because I guess my brain is wired to be more sensitive to typos. Uh, but thankfully, this is nothing uh, as bad as what I've seen in, in other uh, pulp reprints and stuff. And 
you, you wish it wouldn't happen, but again, you can understand it being, you know, a, a, a small company doing these reprints and not having the resources of a major publisher. But just keep in mind that's something you can always run into with uh, reprints like this. Ultimately, I'm really glad I decided to try these. These were a lot of fun, and I didn't expect them to be as action-packed and gritty and quite frankly as gripping as they were because they are so condensed in terms of their page count each of these novels is just over 100 pages and packs a lot of plot in so uh, these are books you do have to pay attention to as, as you're reading because if you put it down and come back to it or you don't think about it for a bit you can very easily get confused and have to go back and reread a chapter because there there is a mystery plot going on with a lot of double crosses and things so don't let the page count fool you. I will be checking out some of the other uh, Bold Venture reprints, and uh, honestly, I hope they, they do more, or I don't, I don't know if somebody else might do an omnibus of, of more of these, because there's simply so many of them. I'd be very curious to check out more, and again, I know it's going to vary due to the longevity of the series and the different number of ghostwriters. It's just really hard when you're looking at all the wonderful pulp reprint publishers, and uh, you're looking at titles and series you've never heard of that they've reprinted, and there's not much information online out there about uh, these more obscure series that you don't necessarily know if it's going to be something you're interested in or something that's going to be very well written. You know, you, you just really don't know. So you eventually have to roll the dice on some. And again, it does look like that uh, Piccadilly Publishing is uh, doing ebooks of a good number of the novels. So that's probably going to be the way to go in terms of if, if they were to try and reprint most or all of the series and um, I would actually be very curious to check out some of those, even though I'm not really an ebook person, because unfortunately I don't see somebody going in and trying to publish all the 400 plus Larry Kent novels, but they're, they're really fun. And there's an energy in these that I think will hook a reader immediately. So if the idea of a very gritty 50s private eye with some elements of, of Mickey Spillane with really nice, tightly plotted little mysteries. Uh, if if that sort of floats your boat or, or that uh, uh, tickles your fancy in any way, then you will definitely love these. So I would highly recommend these Bold Venture reprints. Again, there's 12 of them overall. So 12 books, 24 novels, and each nicely reproduces the very striking pulpy cover artwork of both books. So as always, I hope my babblings about pulp fiction, pulp reprints, detective stories and the wonderful fun of pulp reprint publishers has been at least somewhat fun and informative i really enjoyed reading these larry kent novels i think anybody who likes mysteries will enjoy these and it was really nice to sit down and read a very tightly plotted fast-paced book that you know was just over 100 pages it felt very much like reading a pulp novel in terms of the pacing and the length so uh, i think you can very much see that's what these were growing out of and it's fascinating that this series was done in Australia but they also made the character over into an American detective and these just kept going in Australia for decades and most of us have never heard of them so it's really nice that we have these lovely reprints to check out and have a real blast with. So as always please do keep supporting both independent bookstores and independent publishers by purchasing lovely reprints like these nice Larry Kent editions and that way you're able to support both learning more about uh, elements of literature that are unfortunately just kind of uh, un swept under the rug, but also uh, to help support and keep those independent efforts going and in business because especially the independent publishers need all the help they can get and are, are doing incredible work, sort of reviving uh, uh, books and works that, again, were, were just kind of forgotten about, like the Larry Kent novels. So personally, I hate crime! And thank you ever so much for watching.